Hi folks, this is Melvin from optoproductions.com and in this video I wanted to give you an overview of the Clavia Nordrack 2. Alright, so here I've got the Nordrack 2. Let's begin by resetting the knobs to their default positions. So I'm just gonna pick a new program. On the Nord you can only store presets on preset number 1 through 40. All the presets after this are factory presets and these can't be changed. I'm gonna open up the filter, close the resonance, close the envelope amount. Close both the attack and the decays. Open the sustain and close the release. And I'll set the mix between oscillator 1 and 2 to 12 o'clock. Close the FM amount. And set the fine and coarse pitch to 12 o'clock as well. Turn off portamento. Turn this one off and this one. Oh, and unison is still enabled, so I have to turn that off. And I'm immediately gonna save this as a preset, so I can always return to these basic settings. All right, let's start with the oscillators. The Nord Rack has two oscillators. And with this mix knob, I can blend between oscillator one and two, but I'll turn it to oscillator one for now. And right here, we can change the waveform. So we got a sine, a square wave, a saltoot, and a triangle. And on the square wave, we can change the pulse width as well with this knob over here. Oscillator 2 gives us some more options. So we got a square wave, a saltoot and a triangle wave. And we got a noise oscillator. So with this knob you can change the filter of the noise, but in the other waveforms this becomes a coarse tune. And if you look at the LED on top, you can see exactly when you're on the octave. And right here we've got a fine tune option. If you want you can turn off keyboard tracking. I'm playing different keys right now. But the pitch isn't changing. It could be useful if you're making drum sounds for example. On oscillator 1 we can also change the FM amount. FM is an abbreviation of frequency modulation. And this means that oscillator 2 will change the frequency of oscillator 1. So if I change the pitch on oscillator 2, so you can make some pretty wild sounds with this one. And you can also activate the sync mode. And then you can play with the frequency of oscillator 2. Alright, and then we've got a ring modulation. And we need to change the oscillator 2 to hear the result. The FM now becomes like a tune control. That's because if you change the frequency of oscillator 2, you not only change the timbre, but also the pitch. While with FM, you don't change the frequency, only the timbre. So that's why on ring modulation, the FM now becomes a tune control. And of course you can activate ring modulation and sync at the same time. Alright, let's take a look at the amplifier envelope. So right here we've got an attack, decay, sustain and release, like you'll find on most synthesizers. So the attack is the ramping time, and if I just turn down the sustain, and turn up the decay, then the decay controls the time in between the attack and the sustain phase. So the sustain is the level on which the note sits. And this controls the time in between. 
and the release defines the time it takes for me to let go of the note and the note to die off completely. Basically just like a piano. We can do the same thing for the filter. So here we've got a filter cutoff knob. I'll just turn the attack to the left and the sustain all the way up. So if we turn the frequency knob, then we filter out all the high frequencies. But we can also change the filter type over here. So if we cycle through, we got a combined notch and low pass filter. Then we got a steeper low pass filter. We've got a band pass filter. Removing both the low and high frequencies. I'll just turn up the resonance so you can hear what's going on. And the resonance basically controls the width of the bandpass filter. And lastly we've got a high pass filter. Removing all the low frequencies. But passing the higher frequencies. But I'll just switch back to the low pass filter. And then with the envelope amount. We can modulate the frequency when I play a note. So if I turn down the sustain and I close down the filter, then we don't hear anything. But if I lengthen the attack, you hear the note ramp up and stop. If I now increase the decay, it will go up and back down again. And again with the sustain, I can control the level on which the note stays put. So it's like doing this by hand. Oh yeah, and then we've got a release of course. And you will mostly notice this when I increase the release on the amplifier. Now I let go of the note. Then you will hear the filter slowly closing down. Okay, so the resonance emphasizes the frequency. And the envelope amount will control how far the filter opens up. We can also connect the filter amount to the velocity. So depending on how hard I press on the keys. Then we've got keyboard tracking, which you'll hear when we close down the filter a bit. So with keyboard tracking off and me playing a low note, you can clearly hear the note. But when I play a higher note, now you don't, because the filter is still relatively closed. But if you enable keyboard tracking, you can choose between one third, two thirds or full. And if I play the same note, now you'll hear it clearly. So when I play higher on my keyboard, the filter opens up. Finally, we've got a distortion option, which you can simply turn off and on. This gives a subtle edge to the sound, so only with a couple of options we can already make a whole ton of sounds. So if I open up the sustain, and increase the attack, a long release, and I'll do the same for the filter. And here I'll increase the decay some more. Sustain off, and then we can basically make a pad sound. Lower the filter a bit. Increase the attack and decay. Lower the filter some more. And you can play around with the envelope amount. Lower it some more. I'll turn down the level a bit. And without distortion. Ok, 
Okay, now let's take a look at the LFO. We've got two LFOs on the north. On LFO 1 we've got five different destinations and five different waveforms. So the most basic one is the triangle wave. I've got a rate and amount. And with this button I control the destination. So pulse width modulation, that's this knob. So if I choose a square wave. <laughs> If you see two LEDs, these are the destinations on the right. Or the frequency of oscillator 2. And this is a cool option if we change a different waveform for a second. So we got a square wave, a Lorentz curve, a random or a noise generator, and a saltooth wave. But especially the Lorentz curve is pretty fun to play around with, as it sounds pretty natural and organic. So if you send it to the frequency of oscillator 2 with a subtle amount, and let me change both oscillators to a saltooth, then we can give a lot of movement to our pet sound. Okay, that's a bit too much, maybe a bit less. So that's a cool effect. Then we can modulate both oscillator 1 and 2 in terms of frequency. Or you can set it to random. And now you can really hear the steps. And lastly, we can control the frequency modulation amount. So let me just switch this to a saltooth. Or a triangle. Alright, you get the point. For LFO2 we've got three different modulation options. So we can also control the pitch, I'll just turn this off. Open up the amount, and here we've also got a rate or a speed control. Well, we know that one. Then we've got a filter modulation option. And the waveform of LFO2 is a fixed triangle wave. And finally we can control the amplitude or the volume. So you can create tremolo effects. Okay, so we also got an arpeggiator option. And this replaces LFO2, so we can only use one at the same time. I can turn on the arpeggiator by pressing this button. So you can immediately hear the result. And here we've got five options for the arpeggiator. The bottom LED says down. So if I play a chord, the arpeggio is descending. The next one is up and down. Then we've got up or ascending. Then we've got random. And lastly, we've got echo, and that's pretty cool. If I play a chord, now it becomes a delay. And I can change the amount of delays with this knob. So that's pretty cool, and we can control the rate with this knob. Okay, and for the other settings, so if I change the ARP to down, the knob over here will adjust the range of the ARP, or how many octaves. Mm -hmm. 
So now it takes two octaves. Three and so on. Okay, and then we've got our third modulation option, and that's a modulation envelope, and it's made up of our attack and the K curve. So we got an amount, and this is actually off on 12 o'clock because it's a bipolar control. And here we can choose three options. So the frequency of oscillator 2. If I turn up the amount and I turn on oscillator 2, and I make the decay a bit longer. So what you hear right now is actually only the decay curve. So the pitch goes from high to low. I'll just lengthen this one a bit. Open up the sustain. Okay, so the amount is this uh, knob. But if we move it counterclockwise, it goes from low to high. So exactly the opposite. You can add some attack if you want. So this is a cool option to add more punch to a sound. If you use it slightly. This is useful to add more definition to a bass sound, for example. Alright, then we've got FM. I'll change this to oscillator 1. Okay, and then we've got pulse width modulation. If I just change this to a square wave. So it moves from narrow to wide. Okay, let's take a look at the portamento options. So I can just turn this up. If I play one note at a time, then it smoothly transitions to the next note. And if I set the polyphony to mono, so I can only play one note at a time. If you change portamento to auto, it only works if you play multiple notes at a time. If I play two notes after each other, now you don't hear it, but if I hold one note, and I play the next one, now it moves on. So we have an option to put the whole synth in mono. I'll just turn this off. We can also change this to legato. And now if I hold down one note and play the next, then the filter doesn't re-trigger. I can make this a bit more clear if I change the filter so it closes automatically. So if I play two notes independently, the filter resets. But if I hold down one note and play the next, it doesn't reset. That's different in mono. There it doesn't matter. Poly is if you want to play chords. I believe this note has 16 voices, so you can play 16 notes at the same time. Except when you activate unison, and you can clearly hear this in mono. Now the sound widens up. So Unison makes copies of the note and detunes them slightly. In this case also panned, because I used the note in a stereo setup. You can also control the detune amount. You can see this on the right. You can find this under the system menu. 
if I hold down shift and click system and I press on until I see UN. So here you can change the unison detune. So on one, very light and on nine at max. I think five is a good value and this also works on poly, but then you lose a couple of unison voices. Okay, so if you want to save this by the way, you can simply press store and then you can choose a preset with the arrow buttons. Now click store again and it is saved. Now let's take all we've learned and turn it into a cool pad sound. I'll close down the filter, turn up the envelope amount a bit, a long attack and decay, sustain on but off on the filter and a long release. And then we can add some modulation to oscillator 2 with a Lorentz curve. And I'll switch both oscillators to Saltute. I can turn this one down a bit. And then on LFO 2, I'll choose the filter. A bit slower. And well, Maybe a square wave is fun as well, so we can modulate the pulse width with the mod envelope. Unison is on. Let's increase the speed. And we could even detune the fine tune a bit. And maybe we can turn down oscillator 2 an octave down or an octave up or we could modulate the amplitude here Alright, those are the basics for the Nord Rack 2. Of course, there's a lot more to learn. So if you want to know more about the Nord Rack, just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to make another video about it. For now, I'll see you next week with another tutorial.